Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over Bank OZK's quarter 2 earnings results which just came out last Thursday and this is my largest holding. So in this video I'm going to go over what kind of earnings were reported and what the management said in their letter and in their conference call that gives us some insight into what their plan is for the rest of this year and going forward as a company. So here are the results of the earnings of Bank OZK. For the quarter they had 39 cents per share earnings which was above the estimates of 35 cents now and obviously that's lower than the quarter a year ago which had 86 cents so this quarter they beat their earnings estimates by around 11 percent and it's a nice turnaround from the last quarter where their earnings were awful they had earnings of nine cents which is like 80 percent lower than it was expected to be they also beat revenue estimates by only 1.57 percent and bank ozk has beaten revenue estimates three times over the last four quarters and they passed their earnings per share estimates two times over the last four quarters. So this is a company that pretty often beats the earnings that analysts are expecting. So here are the management's comments for quarter two. Like I've said in previous videos about Banco ZK, they have very high quality assets and that's shown with their charge off ratio was only 0.05% for non-purchase loans. And they also had continued loan growth in the second quarter, you know, something as the economy started to open back up, more people were applying for loans. Bank OZK's balance sheet is probably one of the best in the entire banking industry. Um, you know, as they say, we have the they have the highest leverage ratio among the 100 largest U.S. banks. So a big reason I invested in this stock was it's one of the safest banks out and they have a management team of doing a very good job of being conservative with their balance sheet and not over leveraging like so many other banks do. So they increased their allowance for losses, which was to be expected, even though it was lower than the amount in the first quarter. Now their total reserve for potential losses is around 374 million. Now here they talk about their net interest income and how this has been falling because of the Federal Reserve's decision to continue lowering rates over the past few years. But a good thing is that the net interest income actually increased in this quarter compared to the last few quarters. This is a chart over the last nine quarters of quarterly net interest income and from this, you can see that ever since the end of 2018, interest income was actually decreasing. It was on a slight decline from the last quarter of 2018 and quarter two 2020 is actually the first quarter we've seen since then where there's been an increase in net interest income and the bank is cautiously optimistic about the potential to improve their net interest margin. so i think this trend is starting to reverse and we could see their interest income continue to increase in the future especially if interest rates start to rise again i've talked about that in the past probably not going to happen in the any time in the near future but looking out three to five years from now a very good chance interest rates start to go back up now here management talks about the performance of their commercial real estate loan program portfolio, which really is this bank specialty. They specialize in complex commercial real estate loans. And so obviously with the shutdown, construction was delayed for a lot of these real estate projects that this bank has loans on. And so the vast majority of construction is back up right now. But even though there were a few months of where there was no construction done on these projects, the management says they really don't care if the project is completed with their original schedule or if there's a delay because pretty much all of their loans have built in cushions where an increase in the time to complete projects it doesn't really matter as much. And they actually say that this could be a good thing having these projects go on longer because it just means the borrowers are gonna have to pay back more interest since they're holding the loan longer. Bank OZK also over the past first two quarters of this year have kept their efficiency ratio low. And that's just another quality that's so good about this bank where most other banks have efficiency ratios over 50%, Bank OZK has consistently kept their efficiency ratio in the high 30 to low 40%. Efficiency ratios for banks is just comparing their net income to their non-interest expenses. And the lower this ratio, the better because it means the bank is earning more compared to their expenses. And so one of the things I like a lot about this bank is their ability to keep their expenses down especially compared to their competitors. Now, as I've said in the past about this bank, their loans are some of the highest quality loans I've ever seen. And that's showing in this environment where the net charge off ratio was only 0.05% for non-purchase loans and for purchase loans it was only 4.13%. Now, here's a chart that illustrates how good that is compared to the rest of the industry. This chart goes back to 1997. Every single year, this bank has had lower charge off ratios versus the industry. We can look at this since 2015, it looks like the industry has been that the charge off ratio slowly increasing and right now for banks as a whole it's around 0.55 
And on the other hand, we see Bank OZK is actually decreasing their charge off ratio besides the one loan that they had go bad in 2018. And that was a big scare for a lot of investors. They've quickly gone back down to these very low levels. And for the first half of this year, this bank's charge off ratio was only 0.6%. And so that's something I touched on on my analysis for this stock, where I said, once the economy starts to slow down, this bank's loans will perform better than all of its competitors. And so far, we are definitely seeing that play out where since 2016, the charge off ratio has been extremely low except for the one year in 2018, while compared to the industry whole, the charge off ratio has been increasing. So here's a chart of this bank's real estate loans. And what you really wanna focus on is the loan to value percentage, because this basically indicates how safe these loans are for these banks. And Bank OZK has some of the lowest loan to value levels for their loans compared to the whole banking industry. Most of Bank OZK's real estate loans the loan to value is under 50%. So this gives them a huge cushion in case prices of real estate falls in the short term. For most of these loans, theoretically, the price of these real estate construction projects the appraised value of them could fall by 50% and this bank would still be okay. Where so many other banks at that point would write off the loans as bad loans and try to take over the property as collateral. So over the past two quarters, Bank OZK has increased their book value even though earnings have taken a huge hit. And over the last 10 years, this bank has a compounded book value growth rate of 22.1%. So just a very strong track record. The management of this bank knows how to grow their book value and their equity. So it's a very good sign that they're still doing that even in these tough times. And even the tangible book value has continued to grow as well. Probably the most conservative way to value a bank is based on their tangible book value. And so as long as this numbers and so as long as this number is going up, the value of the bank is increasing. So the fact that they're still able to increase tangible book value at a time where their earnings are down so much from last year really speaks to the quality of the management and what their priorities are. And so right now I'm on the transcript of Bank OZK's conference call for the quarter two earnings. And I think one of the comments really speaks to how prepared management is to handle a downturn in the economy. Where an analyst asked about their real estate loan portfolio and what the new loan to values for these properties looks like as the appraised value of this real estate is expected to fall. And here's what the CEO says, that they're really starting out with low leverage points where the loans are only at 49% of cost and 38% of their appraised value. And so what the CEO George Gleason says is that these really low leverage points gives us a lot of room and that's exactly why they've been conservative and working hard to keep these leverage points so low. So for the worst case scenario, they're prepared and they are able to handle that and they have an extra sense of security for going through a time like that. And so that's really the importance of having a good management team, one that prepares for really the worst case scenario. And this bank has a lot of experience doing that. If you go back to the last recession we had, which had a very big impact on real estate, Bank OZK killed it coming out of the 2008-2009 recession. And the reason for that was that the management was so prepared for an environment like that to happen where they had a lot of cash and they were ready to jump in and they acquired other banks and continued growing when the economy really took a dive. So right now we're in a similar situation where this bank has a lot of cash on hand. And if we do see the economy continue to suffer, I think this management team will continue to do a good job of deploying that cash to continue to grow. And so another question where I think the management gives a very insightful answer is this question right here where an analyst asks about the real estate portfolio. And with this huge shift in the way people are living and working now, if we're not gonna see a large need for commercial real real estate as we have in the past. So, and I'm gonna leave the answer here so you can read it if you want. But basically what the CEO says is that, yeah, for a while we're gonna expect a lower demand for commercial real estate, but eventually we think that will start to pick up again and that there will always be some sort of a need for commercial real estate. Now the type of commercial real estate may change where it's not gonna be classic, you know, office buildings anymore and said it's gonna be a different kind of commercial real estate, but there will always be a need for these large buildings out there. And a very interesting thing he says at the end is something I touched on on my analysis of this bank is that right now, Bank OZK's loan growth has slowed because a bunch of other competitors have come into the commercial real estate space and they're saying to all these people that want real estate loans, they're saying, well, Bank OZK won't lend to you because your credit's not good enough or because you don't want to pay as high of a percent. You know, we'll, lo we'll still loan to you even though your credit isn't as good. And so that works out while the market's still going up. But as soon as we see a slowdown in the economy, a lot of those other banks that are making these commercial real estate loans are going to be forced out of this industry. And so at that point, it's going to be Bank OZK is going to have access to all of these state developments that those other banks couldn't continue to write loans on. So in my opinion, that will also be a pretty large driver of growth for this bank. And so the last thing I'm gonna to touch on is the dividend. There was a question asked about the dividend and if it will continue to be paid and if there will be any stock buybacks happening. And really the answer to this gives me a lot of faith in this bank's dividend. 
where this bank is one of the best capitalized banks in the United States. They've increased their dividend every quarter for the past 39 quarters. And so basically what they say is that even though the rate of increase in the dividend may slow, they have full faith that they'll continue to pay the dividend. And their core earnings and capital levels definitely support their current dividend at the time and probably will support an increase in the future. So this bank's very confident that they'll continue to pay the dividend. And in my opinion, I think this is actually one of the best dividend plays out there in the stock market right now. In terms of yield, I think the dividend yield right now is just under 5%. In terms of the history of the dividend, it's grown for 39 straight quarters. And in terms of commitment from the management to keep the dividend and continue growing it at a time where so many other companies are slashing their dividends or temporarily pausing their dividends, you know, I think that combination of those three qualities is something you're really not going to find with a lot of other companies right now. So if you are a big dividend investor, this is definitely an interesting stock I would look into. Obviously, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But in terms of what I've seen looking at a bunch of stocks, not many compare with Banco ZK in terms of the current yield they're paying and the safety of that dividend. So that's really it for this video. A few interesting points I wanted to touch on there. I think this company is in a great position for the future. They're in a very good position in terms of the safety of their loans and the amount of cash they have on hand to deploy that and continue to grow if the economy continues to go downhill. The dividend's still around at just under 5%. A very good dividend yield in the current environment we're in. And so overall, I still think very highly of this company. That's why they are my largest position in the stock market. In terms of what the price is doing, we're at $24 right now. I said in my analysis that I, in my opinion, this bank is worth over $50. And so I think we're gonna get there eventually. Now it might be a while, I don't expect this stock to go straight up to $50, but I think as the environment we're in plays out and, and we really get a better sense of what direction the economy is headed in, I think investors will start to value the safety of this bank. And that combined with the dividend yield will drive investors to this bank and really raise up the stock price. Again, I invest for the long term, so I don't know what's gonna happen to the stock price in the next few weeks and next few months, but projecting into the longer term years out, I think there is a very good potential for high returns with this stock. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you own this stock and what you think about their earnings report. And I've gotten some comments asking about my portfolio and if I've bought or sold any new stock. So I'm going to have a video coming out this week talking about my portfolio and if I've made any changes with it. So stay tuned for that. It's probably going to come out sometime later this week. And so that's it for this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you found some value out of it. Subscribe to the channel where I talk about unique stock picks like this all the time. And I'll see you on the next video.